daddy's not gonna find us. Welcome to Screen Recaps, and today we are going to be recapping the movie Straw Dogs. Scriptwriter David Sumner and his actress wife, Amy, relocate to rural Mississippi, Amy's hometown, settling into her late father's house to give David space to complete his script. During a town visit, David encounters Charlie, Amy's ex-boyfriend, along with his friends Norman, Chris, and Bick. They've been hired to repair the barn roof on Amy's estate. While ordering beer, David also meets Tom Hedden, a former high school football coach battling alcoholism. Tom's daughter Janice, a 15-year-old cheerleader, is in a relationship with Jeremy Niles, a local man with intellectual disabilities. Tom, troubled by misconceptions, perceives Jeremy as a threat to his daughter and mistreats him. The next morning, Charlie and his crew arrive to start work on the roof. Initially, their interactions with David are teasing, but escalate into harassment. They also make rude comments to Amy and disrupt David's writing with loud music. Additionally, they frequently leave the job to go hunting, delaying the roof repairs. Amy becomes increasingly frustrated, blaming David for not standing up to them. Following a Sunday service, he don aggressively confronts Jeremy for conversing with Janice, prompting Amy to step in to defend Jeremy. However, David cautions her against getting involved in the situation. That night, upon returning home, a distressing discovery awaits David. Their pet has been harmed and hung up in the bedroom closet. Amy firmly believes Charlie and his acquaintances are responsible given their absence during the church gathering earlier in the day, but David hesitates to directly confront them. When he eventually broaches the subject, the individuals vehemently deny any involvement in the disturbing incident. Charlie invites David for a trip. While David is away, Charlie returns home feeling convinced that Amy still desires him. He barges in, throws her onto the couch, and coerces her into an unwanted physical encounter, making disrespectful comments about her feelings. Realizing he's committed a serious offense, Charlie is shocked by his actions. Norman arrives, restrains Amy, and takes advantage of the situation while Charlie observes. They eventually depart. When David returns, Amy chooses not to disclose what transpired. Instead, she urges David to distance himself from Charlie and his associates. David confronts Charlie the next day on the roof's poor progress. David agrees to pay the costs, even though Charlie insists they've already paid for the supplies. At last, Charlie and his group head off, feeling very proud of their $5,000 profit. Janice ushers Jeremy into an unoccupied locker room while David and Amy watch a local football game. When Heaton notices his daughter is missing, he starts looking for her. Heaton's calls interrupt Janice as she tries to convince Jeremy to help him in the locker room, fearful of being found out. When Jeremy tightly restrains Janice, he unintentionally contributes to her death. Jeremy leaves the school, shocked. Suspicions regarding Jeremy's involvement arise when Heaton comes back to tell Charlie and their pals about Janice's abduction. Amy's mind is filled with disturbing recollections during the game, and she asks David to take her home. She surprises David by saying she wants to go back to Los Angeles when they are traveling. Because of this distraction, David and Jeremy unintentionally collide on the road, fracturing Jeremy's arm. After hurrying Jeremy back to their house, Charlie and Norman, hearing the ambulance transmission on a police scanner, alert heading, call for an ambulance. They all gather at David and Amy's house and demand that Jeremy give himself up. David is adamantly opposed to raising the stakes. David, a sense of urgency taking hold of him, tells Amy to take Jeremy upstairs so they can be safe. The sheriff shows up in an attempt to defuse the situation, but David won't open the door had not made a snap decision and shot the sheriff dead during the confrontation. David realizes that they are in immediate danger. Not just Jeremy, but themselves, having seen the murder. When David and Amy realized how vulnerable they were, they strengthened their house and locked the doors. Aware that they could be in for a lethal encounter, David is hurrying to get any household item that could protect them from the oncoming attackers. As Chris tries to get in through a window, David reacts quickly and uses a nail gun to immobilize Chris by fastening his hands to the wall. This increases the tension. But amid the turmoil, shards of glass severely damage Chris's throat. Had pushes in a frantic attempt to break through the defenses. But David strikes back with great force. He stops Hedden's progress by splattering hot oil in his face, causing severe burns. Charlie is knocked unconscious in the accident that happens when Hedden and Charlie decide to smash the home with a pickup truck. With adrenaline fueling his actions, David engages in a brutal confrontation with Hedon, managing to incapacitate him by causing a self-inflicted gunshot wound to Hedon's foot. 
In a critical moment of defense, David shoots Hadon before he can harm them with a revolver. However, the violence doesn't cease there. Bick becomes the next target as David, caught in the intensity of the moment, resorts to using a fireplace poker to end the threat, beating Bick to his demise. The scene intensifies upstairs as Norman, breaking in through the window, threaten Amy with a terrifying, defying assault. Jeremy and Amy face the danger when David and Charlie suddenly arrive, escalating the tension. A confrontation erupts between Charlie and Norman, leading to a standoff where Norman threatens Amy's life. In a pivotal moment, Amy takes action, shooting Norman to protect herself. However, Charlie reacts violently, disarming her and launching an assault. David intervenes, engaging in a fierce struggle with Charlie, only to be brutally beaten and thrown down the stairs. With David defenseless on the floor, Charlie prepares to deliver the final blow when Amy, armed with a shock, confronts him. In a chilling moment, Charlie claims the gun is empty, declaring his intent to protect her. However, as tension mounts, David seizes an opportunity using the open bear trap to fatally strike Charlie, ending his reign of terror. In the aftermath, amidst the shock and horror of the scene, Amy finds a sense of closure and solace in knowing that her assailants are no longer a threat. In the midst of approaching sirens as he watches the barn engulfed in flames, David, amidst the chaos and aftermath of the intense conflict, utters with a mix of relief and resolution, I got him all. I thought I was done.